الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه واتباعه ومن والاه <coughs> We'll be going through جزء uh, three إن شاء الله تعالى May Allah the Almighty allow us to understand Quran to learn Quran with the intention to act upon إن شاء الله and then reach it around بإذن الله تعالى in the start, we have the ayah, ayat al-Kursi, as uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam named it, a'zamu ayatin fil Qur'an, the greatest ayah of Qur'an. And uh, this ayah has uh, al-ism al-a'zam, the greatest name of Almighty Allah, the greatest attribute of Allah the Almighty. As we learn in authentic hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us Ismullah uh, al-A'zam in Surah al-Baqarah wa Ali Imran wa Taha. Allah's greatest name is in these three uh, surahs. Al-Baqarah, Ali Imran and Taha. One of the narrators, Imam Qasim, and he is the great son of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Qasim bin Muhammad bin Abi Bakr. <coughs> He said that I فَلْتَمَسْتُهَا فَوَجَدْتُهَا الْحَيِّ الْقَيُّومِ I start searching for it and I found it الْحَيِّ الْقَيُّومِ In this ayah, ayah number 255 as we know And the first ayah of Al Imran Alif Lam Meem Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum We will be inshallah reciting that also tonight And the third one in Surah Taha وَعَنَتِ الْوُجُوهُ لِلْحَيِّ الْقَيُّومِ in all the three, you will find the attributes of Allah, Al-Hay, Al-Qayyum. What it stands for, very briefly, Hay, the one who has granted us the life, the provider of life. And after giving us life, he did not ignore us. He is the one who is Al-Qayyum, the one who runs this life. Not just ours, life of each and every single creation in this universe. How he is running it? He is the Raziq. He is the Rabb, the provider, the cherisher, the sustainer, the Almighty. <coughs> and then in the next ayah, ayah number 256, La ikraha fi deen. There is no enforcement in this deen. Whenever you are going to uh, read deen without alif lam, without al di in Quran, that is any lifestyle, any way of life. But when it comes ad deen, and uh, that is also in chapter 3 in para, in Jews 3rd, inna deen indallah al Islam. The uh, way of life which Allah the Almighty has chosen for us is Islam. Submission, complete submission, what Prophet ﷺ brought to us. Fidahu nafsi wa abi wa ummi. So we cannot enforce anyone to enter Islam. The concept Islam was spread out with sword is totally wrong. A misconcept. No religion. Religion is a big thing. You cannot occupy a small territory with sword, with force. We can see Palestine over 70 years. One of the powers uh, which is uh, claiming to be atomic power cannot occupy it with force. Subhanallah. Whenever and wherever Muslims went, they liberated those territories. And they spread equality, justice. And that is all about our deen. And the people, they welcomed this deen. I'll give you just one example and move on because of the shortage of time. Subhanallah, when, uh, if as we call it, invaders or conquerors, if it was conquering those people who accepted Islam, what they accept with Islam, subhanallah, and pay attention on this one, they even changed their culture for Muslims, for so-called conquerors or invaders. 
They sacrifice with their even mother tongues. Go into North Africa. All of it today, Arab countries. Were they Arab? Subhanallah. I'll add on. At the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all the Sham, Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine, Iraq, they were not Arab countries. Read in the history, you will be amazed. When Sahaba went there, they changed their culture, their language, their mother tongue, everything for the sake of these newcomers, whom they love and welcome that much that they sacrifice everything for them, even their mother tongues. <clears throat> and that's what we require today to spread Islam, to spread this beautiful way of life through love, through example. And here very briefly and very quickly, I'll take a little bit more moments. We, most of the time, emphasize on the appearance. That uh, your dress should be and must be above the ankles. Uh, you should look like this. You should look like that. Because Prophet Wasallam used to look like this. All the sunnah, which is zahir, appearance sunnah of Rasulullah, we call him ala ra'as wal ayn. No one, no Muslim could deny them. Remember that. But just tell me, non-Muslims used to recall Rasulullah with what? With his appearance or with his character? Sadiq, Al-Ameen, the most truthful, the most honest, Fidahu Nafsi wa Abi wa Ummi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most trustworthy. That's how they recognize him with. Are we recognized with such things? Or we are fighting with each other and arguing. You look like this. No, 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 you look like that. And the moment I see anyone, the first thing I do, I judge him or her. Mm, not good Muslim. La ilaha illallah. Have I seen and went through his heart or her heart to judge? Or we are involved in the sects and are segregated accordingly. I just move on with this instructions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is in Sahih Muslim and other books of Ahadith. In Allah ta'ala la yanzuru ila suwarikum wala ila ajsamikum. Allah the Almighty doesn't care about how you look like, how you have shaped up. These are the wordings of Rasulullah fidahu nafsi wa abi wa ummi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Walakin yanzur ila qulubikum wa a'malikum. What matters to Allah is here. My intentions. Then intentions, how I put them in character, in deeds. What are my actions? That's what Allah the Almighty is concerned about. How you look alike is a secondary. Then we move on in the same surah Al-Baqarah. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, uhu you believe, la tubtilu sadaqatikum. Do not waste your sadaqat, your charities. How? You are giving yet wasting your sadaqat. Bil manni wal adha. By two things. By showing favors upon people and hurting their egos. This is uh, ayah number 264 in the same surah uh, Al-Baqarah. <clears throat> and in the same surah, ayah number 273, Allah the Almighty asking us to find, to look for the needy ones. It's not their responsibility to come over and ask me or beg from me. It's my responsibility to go to them, to find them out, to give them what they require. And Allah the Almighty mentioned them, لا يسألون الناس الحافة. They don't ask people, the true believers, no matter they are in need, in desperate need. 
I should be the one going to them, finding them out and fulfilling their needs. And uh, that was a system of zakah, system of sadaqat, which we have lost today, unfortunately. Prophet Sallallahu used to take care of each and every widow, orphan, himself as well as Khulafa al-Rashideen. Then the last ayah revealed in Quran, ayah number 281 of Surah Al-Baqarah. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ I'll just go through the translation, fear the day in which you are going to return to Allah. Fear that day in which you are going to return to Allah. ثُمَّ then تُوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ Everyone will be given what they have earned. And fully. Tuwaffa would be given exactly what they have committed. Wahum la yuzlamun. No one would be oppressed. And afterwards is the, and this is the last ayah revealed. We, uh, the most common known ayah is Al Yawma Akmaltu Lakum Deenakum. After that, this ayah all, uh, also revealed, and that was the end of the Wahi upon our holy mentor, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the longest ayah in Quran, ayah number 283, we call it ayat al-mudayana, the ayah of uh, give and take. Longest ayah is not about salah, amazingly. It's not about fasting. It's not about hajj. It's about dealings. The one we are, subhanallah, neglect completely. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us ad-deen al-mu'amala. You want to see and judge your own deen, see how much fear you are in dealings. A person who is praying but lying is not a good believer, has no faith. La deena liman la ahdala. وَلَا إِيمَانَ لِمَنْ لَا أَمَانَةَ لَهُ A person who has, who cannot keep up his or her promises has no deen, no base. And a person who is not trustworthy, honest, has no iman. Again, these are the wordings of our holy mentor, Fidahu Nafsi wa Abi wa Ummi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I'll end with the last two ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us, let me uh, very quickly tell you the virtues of these two ayat and uh, add up because we have one, two minutes. Ayat Al-Kursi, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned if a person recites Ayat Al-Kursi, of course with understanding, after each and every fault salah, between him and between Jannah, there is only one obstacle and barrier. That is that, death. You are keeping on reciting Ayatul Kursi, but with understanding. You know what you are reciting. Between you and Jannah is only death. Subhanallah. So keep it, inshallah, in your routine. Uh, plus Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us a person who keeps uh, upon reciting Ayat al-Kursi after each and every fard salah uh, he or she would be secured till the next salah and one more uh, virtues of Ayat al-Kursi Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said if you have it in house you are reciting Ayat al-Kursi in house in any place لا يقربها شيطان this is in Sahih Muslim. All the ahadith I'm quoting here, inshallah, they are authentic. Shaitan cannot get closer, meaning it would be blessed. So try to make it your habit before going to sleep. Recite Ayat al-Kursi. And the last two ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, because of the time I cannot go into translation, just one virtue Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that whoever keep upon reciting these last two ayat from Aman al-Rasul till the end, فَقَدْ 
من قرأها في ليلة كفتاه. You recite these two ayah in any night, it will be enough for you. Enough meaning, again, as a protection, as even ibadah, as in any angle we could think of, it would be enough and sufficient for us. But again, we need to learn what we are saying. These ayat and these surah are not spell, are not magical spell. I'm telling you very simply. Try to learn these ayat, then recite them with understanding, inshallah ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullahu khair al jaza. Allahumma rahamna bil Quran al Azim. Allahumma anfa'na bil Quran al Azim. Allahumma zakir.